Hi, this is Bobby Lombardi live here from AES with David Gould from Dolby Labs. He is the product manager for content creation at Dolby. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. David, can you tell us a little bit about Atmos? What, what is Atmos? Dolby Atmos is the new sound format um, from Dolby. Um, it really builds on what we've learned over many years of being involved in sound um, from, you know, stereo, Dolby Surround, 5.1, 7.1. But this really goes much further than that. It's no longer a just a channel-based system. It takes the best of a channel-based system. It adds a new overhead dimension. So there's stereo overhead arrays in addition to the um, surround arrays that already exist. But then on top of that 9.1 array, we also have these objects. So now, rather than having to record everything into a stem, suddenly you can keep these discrete objects throughout the whole mix and then at playback time they're actually rendered into the correct position in space. So there's a lot more flexibility. Suddenly you don't have to light up the entire wall in a movie theater. You can have these panther arrays so you can address every speaker individually and these objects can fly through the speakers so you get a lot more precision. It's almost like having more pixels on a screen. You have more speakers and you don't have to play them all. You can just play them individually with these objects and depending on how many speakers you've got it will re-render intelligently. So in a different room you have a different speaker lay out a different number of speakers, but it will still give you that spatial fidelity. David, can you give me an example of some films that have been mixed with this new technology? Absolutely. So um, the first movie to use this technology was um, Disney Pixar's Brave back in, in, uh, in June. And then recently, uh, there have been a couple of movies. Taken 2 was released a few weeks ago in Dolby Atmos. And today, actually, um, Chasing Mavericks, which is a, a surf movie about the, the Mavericks um, competition down in Santa Cruz. Uh, that comes out in Dolby Atmos. That's an amazing mix. They've really kind of done incredible things with the waves and it all feels very, you know, when they're surfing and underwater, it's, it's pretty amazing. Mixed by a guy called Craig Hennigan down at, uh, at Fox. Um, the Life of Pi, which comes out in a few weeks, is um, another Dolby Atmos title. That's a pretty epic Ang Lee movie based on the novel, which is going to be very impressive. And um, Rise of the Guardians as well, a DreamWorks movie. And then the big news um, earlier this week we announced was um, the Hobbit, the first, uh, the An Unexpected Journey is being released in Dolby Atmos, so that will be coming out in a few weeks, um, and the mix of that is starting very soon. So we've got quite a good pipeline of movies, some, a lot of studios are very interested, um, and, and content creators are really enjoying working in the format. It suddenly gives them a lot more flexibility, they've got this extra dimension to work with, and these objects really allow them to do things that they've never really been able to do in a, in a, a mix situation before. Thanks, David. Uh, um, you, you remind me of something there with the content creators. Now, these films are uh, mixed in Pro Tools, I believe, and Dolby is a third-party development partner with plugins. How does that all work? So what's the workflow there with the content creators that are pre-mixing these movies, are targeting Atmos? Um, what's that look like? What, what, what is the technology? What's the, work, what's the workflow? Right, absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, when, when Dolby was first looking at uh, the new format, Dolby Atmos, it was really a holistic view was taken. You know, we can't just come out with a format or a cinema processor or, or anything we need to go right back to how people create content and if you want to work with uh, content creators especially in the movie industry you've really got to work with Pro Tools um, so what we have today is a, a plugin for Pro Tools which talks to our renderer so it's a panning plugin uh, looks like a kind of standard planner pa planner panner standard panner um, but with a height control, um, and that's uh, a plugin that then you take the discrete output that talks to our, our RMU, which is the rendering and mastering unit, and um, actually produces the metadata, which then positions the sound in space. Um, so we're very heavily involved in the, the Pro Tools side of things. So. Um, we're also um, building integration with other third-party consoles, but we have the um, Pro Tools integration, and then obviously from the Yukon side as well, um, so System 5, for example, can control our plugin via Yukon, um, which really kind of makes the, the nice workflow from a, a desktop-based uh, controller solution through to a large format console where you can have that control of the objects in addition to having the engine doing the, um, the bed panning so the, the, for the 9-1 um, underlying bed without the objects. So it sounds like more speakers, more objects, um, probably a lot more tracks. I mean, it, it, did the uh, advent of the HDX system with the increased track counts there, does that, is that, um, I guess, a, a, a pinnacle thing for Atmos? Or? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it was very fortuitous timing, really. Because as you say, you know, with, with Atmos, suddenly you can have up to 128 streams. Your print master, instead of being six channels in a 5.1 or eight channels in a 7.1, suddenly it's 100 or up to 128 channels wide. So there's a lot more audio and throughout the whole mix, you're keeping these objects discrete. Uh, so there's just a lot more channels and really 
HDX made a lot of that possible. It would have been very difficult um, to do it previously. So you look at some of the, the mixes that we've done so far and, you know, we're, we're up there 450, 470 voice sessions, which obviously, you know, the, the voice aggregation in HDX is, is really a key thing for that. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it worked out very nicely for everyone, actually. Thank you, David. No, that's great. Um, now, I believe if uh, if you're interested in more uh, information on Atmos, you can go to dolby.com forward slash Atmos. And can you find information as to which theaters offer Atmos technology? Absolutely. So right now, um, we're still in this pre-release phase, and uh, there are uh, something like 15 theaters, I think, in the US currently with um, Dolby Atmos. But the good news is by the time um, Hobbit comes out at the end of the year, we're hoping to be up between 80 and 100 theaters. And if you go to dolby.com slash Atmos, it will give you a list of um, uh, Dolby Atmos equipped theaters. Well, that's great, David. David, thank you for taking the time. This is really exciting news. Thank you very much. Good to be here.